Recrystallization is an important technique in the organic chemistry lab for purifying a solid product. The solvent chosen to perform the recrystallization must have appropriate dissolving powers with the solid to be recrystallized. Other factors such as costs and post-experiment disposal must also be of consideration. A suitable solvent will dissolve the desired solid at high temperatures, while at low temperatures only a small amount of the solid is dissolved. Ideally, the solvent should dissolve impurities at low temperatures. Two other considerations for solvents include being non-reactive with your organic compound and the ease of removal following use. The first step in recrystallization is finding the right solvent. This will involve adding a bit of the solid sample into each solution and then observing to see if the solid dissolves in the solvent at room temperature. We are not interested in the solvents which can dissolve the solid at room temperature. Then we place these mixtures into a heated water bath set at or near the boiling point of the solvent. Watch the mixtures and add more solvent if there appears to be some solubility but solid still remains. You want to choose the solvent that has complete solid solubility while heated. At times you may need to perform a mixed solvent recrystallization because one solvent may be too soluble while another is insoluble. The stipulation here is that the two solvents must be soluble in each other. Now that you've chosen a solvent for recrystallization, it's time to perform it on a larger scale. You have a choice of all kinds of glassware to use for the crystallization, but we typically use an Erlenmeyer flask since it has a small opening which minimizes solvent loss through evaporation. Start with a minimal amount of solvent to just cover the crystals. It's always good practice to add less solvent at first because you can always add more later. Be sure to add a stir bar to avoid solvent bumping. And if you forget to add the stir bar after you've heated the mixture, wait for the solution or mixture to cool before you add the stir bar. Heat the mixture to a gentle boil and wait for the solid interest to dissolve. If it doesn't dissolve after several minutes of boiling, add a bit more solvent. Obviously, the longer you wait, the more solvent that boils off and less likely the solid will dissolve. Although the solution may appear clear at first glance, there may be insoluble impurities left in the solution. You can filter the impurities out by using a gravity filtration. The apparatus should be set up in the fume hood on a hot plate on heat to prevent premature crystallization. You do not want the plate too hot as it may result in, in the evaporation of the solvent. Start by obtaining a large filter paper and folding it into the fluted appearance. This will increase the surface area for the solution to filter through. Before filtering your solution, ensure that the funnel is as close to the mouth of the Erlenmeyer as possible and pour small amounts of hot solvent through the funnel and filter paper. To save time, the preparation of the gravity filtration setup can be done while the solvent is dissolving the solid. To avoid premature crystallization of the product on your funnel, add your solution in small increments and make sure to cover the top of the funnel with a watch glass. It is pertinent to use a stemless funnel because the filtrate could crystallize on the glassware, as is the case with a stem funnel. Some crystals will inevitably form on the filter paper since the solvent evaporates. Simply add a little bit more hot, pure solvent to redissolve the solid. At times, you may have to perform a grad filtration on a small volume, and using a piece of filter paper would absorb too much solution. So to perform a grad filtration on a small scale, take a glass pipette and pack some cotton or Kim wipe into the pipette. Pack only about one centimeter or so, and then pass the solution through the pipette and collect the filtrate. You will have to prepare an ice bath using 
a beaker or an aluminum pan to contain the ice water mixture. Allow the filtrate to cool to approximately room temperature first and then further cool in an ice bath. The crystallization process determines the quality of your product. If the solution is rapidly immersed in an ice bath before allowed to cool to room temperature, small crystals will form, and small crystals are undesirable because of this large surface area and thus likely to retain impurities. If crystals don't form after several minutes of the solution being cooled, there are two common methods to induce crystallization. The first method is to use a glass rod to gently scratch the inside of the glassware. You want to apply enough pressure so that you're flaking off pieces of glass into the solution, which increases the surface area and provides a foundation for the crystals to grow. If you're unsuccessful with the scratching method, then you may have too much solvent. If this is the case, simply reduce the volume by boiling away the solvent in the fume hood. Now that your crystals are formed, the final step is to isolate the product. For the setup, high pressure compressed air is used in the Venturi pumps to generate vacuum. So for your safety, be sure to not exceed the recommended pressure of 6 PSI. Be sure that the apparatus is fully secured with clamps. You will need to decide whether to use the Hirsch or Buchner funnel. The plastic Hirsch funnel is used for small volumes unlike the larger porcelain Buchner funnel. Notice the trap connecting the vacuum apparatus and the sidearm receiving flask. The purpose of the trap is to prevent the filtrate from reaching the vacuum apparatus. Then open the stopcock and check for vacuum with the funnel by cupping your hand over the funnel to feel air being drawn through. Be sure to wet the filter paper with cold solvent. After filtering your solution, wash the crystals with a small amount of cold solvent. Allow the vacuum to run for 10 to 15 minutes or until the crystals appear dry and not sticky. Once dried, carefully remove the crystals from the funnel to a new piece of filter paper. As a general rule of thumb, suction filtration is normally done to keep the solids while gravity filtration is used to keep the liquids. In the video, you have learned that recrystallization is an important technique for purifying solids. You learned how to test a solvent for appropriateness in the recrystallization, how to perform a gravity filtration, and how to isolate the crystals from a solid using suction filtration.